All right, so I'm going to talk about the Vikings. And keep in mind that the Vikings are also Germanic uh, peoples, okay? And um, they're up north, and one could also argue a part of the last vestiges of, uh, of paganism um, coming out of Europe. Now, they start their invasions around the 9th and 10th centuries, and uh, their inf they infamously sack a Christian monastery uh, um, on the British Isles, right? Okay, and um, they uh, um, conquer everywhere. They leave their imprint everywhere, and eventually they're going to blend in and they're going to Christianize themselves. So uh, uh, basically, Swedish Vikings are going to um, come into what is uh, established Kiev. And the Rus, as they were known, are going to give the name of uh, uh, that big continent called Russia, or, or the country Russia, right? So uh, um, the very term Russia comes from Swedish Vikings that marry Slavs and then end up spe speaking the Slavic language and convert to Christianity and blend right in. Done. Um, you're going to have Vikings who invade. Uh, um, the Norsemen or the Northmen are going to invade parts of France and they're going to become, uh, they're going to get Normandy, named after the Norsemen, and, and they're going to become the Normans and they're going to end up intermarrying and they're going to eventually speak a form of the French language and conquer the British Isles. You're going to have the British Isles before them conquering, uh, uh, being conquered by Vikings. Vikings are going to establish Dublin. Um, they're going to have uh, 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 rural parts of the of, of um, Britain and some of the like the Orkney Islands and um, Shetland Islands, uh, I believe, um, and um, Isle of Man, um, and so on. And then, um, so <clears throat> their legacy is uh, uh, very extensive. Now, what I just want to point out is that your textbooks often talk about the fact that you know the question is what led to these. Uh, uh, people of the small area to go out and, and do this and um, you know do it with success with their Viking ships which could go right down rivers um, I mean th these things were, 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 were really streamlined quite well for not just travel you know traveling but for you know getting up close and doing quick raids and in invasions and Part of the theories is that uh, maybe there was a population growth and scarcity of, of resources. Um, only a few have addressed the fact that Charlemagne was killing uh, pagans and destroying uh, uh, sacred groves um, that'd be dedicated to Thor and so on on the continent um, as if their northern Germanic pagan tribes weren't going to be getting catching wind or hearing about this. And so they didn't leave behind a record. And so we don't know, you know, the, the writings about the Vikings came from their uh, later, their Christian enemies, just like we had with Rome talking about Celts and Germanic people. And I think it's very plausible, and not, not just me, some other scholars, that they were also making a direct response to Christianity, basically, you know, um, a, a kind of attack back and this is where where you know in history things get kind of uh, tricky and I'm gonna get a little controversial but but uh, I have to 9-11 for many Americans if we just heard the story from Americans uh, George Bush said they did this because they were uh, jealous of our freedom or they were upset with our freedom and for many Americans 9-11 was the first strike by uh, you know extremist terrorists but if you read the manifesto that Al-Qaeda left behind, they claim that they're responding, that, that they're not striking the first blow, they're striking a response to our presence and our role in the Middle East that they consider to be offensive and destructive. Now, I'm not, you know, my point is, is that when you only have one side telling a story, um, History simply takes that one side and disregards the other. And uh, I, I'm not talking about, I, I'm going to walk quickly away from trying to make any justifications for 9-11. Uh, I'm merely trying to point out is that when 
uh, certain acts happen. Um, there's various uh, uh, things that can set them off. And sometimes people can portray them in a way that skews the reasons why it's happening. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, in any case, the Vikings did uh, do some pretty violent um, and uh, awful pillaging. And they did terrorize quite a bit uh, 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 the, the British Isles and the continent of Europe. And they did eventually uh, settle uh, down, and eventually they did convert to Christianity. But they, um, you know, they also had some of the Vikings move to Iceland and went, went even further up north, uh, mainly coming from Norway. And why I mention this is uh, this is a Thor's hammer. We see many of these in archaeological record, okay, uh, uh, Mjolnir, okay. Um, so there was definitely an affection for Thor. As, as your textbook points out, our, our very calendar still holds over many of these dramatic gods. Thursday is Thor's day, okay. Um, uh, that is right. Now, what's interesting, if you've watched the TV show The Vikings, you know the story of Thor, of Odin. Um, if you did any kind of dabbling in Norse mythology, uh, the mythology of the Vikings, almost all of the information that we have comes from Christian writers um, in the uh, 13th, uh, written around the 13th century. Um, one in particular important writer is Snorri Sturluson. Snorri Sturluson is a legend in Iceland. Okay, he, um, he was an Icelandic historian, poet, and politician. And he ends up writing what is now known as the Prose Edda. E-D-D-A. You can buy um, this book in translations. And he tells a story of all of, uh, you know, of these mythologies. And... He, he tries to explain also these um, poetic ballads that um, had these references to things that you wouldn't be able to understand unless you knew the stories behind them. And he appears to have been trying to um, preserve uh, a, a kind of pre-Christian heritage. Um, and what he does, though, is he makes them safe and claims that, uh, that Odin... And, and Thor actually came from Troy and that they were men who people ended up worshiping as gods. So he he kind of comes up with a story to um, excuse the paganism and then uh, go straight forward. And, and, and he has to say, of course, the true religion is Christianity. Now, um, keep in mind that Iceland didn't officially go Christian and only by vote until uh, the year 1000 in Iceland. So, of course, it makes sense that they've had the longest uh, preservation of these uh, myths. And then there's another text uh, that we don't know who wrote. Uh, it's called the Poetic Edda, Edda E-D-D-A. And then we have sagas coming from Iceland, um, written in these later periods, um, that also tell the story of the exploits of Vikings with some of these um, references to early um, Norse mythologies. And so... What I'm just trying to make a point of is that all that we know of, from, of of Germanic religion essentially comes from 13th century Icelandic writers. And uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, who wrote The Lord of the Rings, uh, did taught Icelandic and uh, much of Lord of the Rings comes from, uh, influenced by Snorri Sturluson. If you um, followed Wagner's, uh, uh, you know, operas, um, he mainly takes from the writings of Snorri Sturluson. Um, Snorri Sturluson is probably one of the most influential writers on European uh, um, art and culture that you never heard of as one um, writer uh, once mentioned. Um, and what's going to be interesting is for Nazis, um, and other kind of uh, nationalists, they're going to have to look, if they want to look to thinking about uh, pre-Christian Germanic peoples, they really only have these limited sources to go, th go to and are going to kind of use them to kind of recreate an idea about maybe what all Germanic people thought. And that's problematic. So we don't know how much 
you know, what he wrote is is his own idea or, you know, how, what, did, what did he embellish? Um, when he talks about the beginning of time, Ganangigap, um, it, it talks about volcanic volcanic activity and ice, which sounds a lot like the topography of Iceland, but wouldn't maybe work for other uh, parts of the Germanic world. So, um, you know, was that, uh, as Ganangigap, which many people see as a kind of uh, Germanic concept of the beginning of creation, could be simply an Icelandic one, could even have been a Snorri Sturluson one. Um, um, but he does tell all these these, these skaldic poetry uh, tales that had these references to uh, images and stories of the gods that wouldn't be known unless you knew the stories. And so there must have been somewhat a, 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 a decent preservation there uh, in those writings. Um, so I invite you to look into those. They're very interesting. Um, they will kind of give you an insight into the world, <coughs> to the pre-Christian Germanic world um, that uh, many of us ha have been lost on. Um, keep in mind, too, just as another side note, many white nationalists now um, embrace things like Odin and Thor and all of this as indigenous white people religion prior to the Roman invasion. So um, it's interesting to see how this appeal for this uh, um, past has been brought into various political circles. And to this day, there is a group called the Satru, um, which are neo-pagans that do worship the um, old Norse gods and actually believe in them. Some are, are called folkish, where they're actually white nationalist type of groups. Others are universalists that believe in, they're, they're more inclusive uh, of other peoples. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just kind of want to introduce you to this uh, world, various ways of looking at um, pre-Christian um Celtic and Germanic world. And again, this was extremely limited. Please go and continue to expand uh, your knowledge. And now I'm going to move on to Christianity.